A nice roller lifter is great technology in any engine build where you want to maximize performance. They let you run more aggressive cam loads and help you squeeze more power out of any engine build. But no matter which you use, you've got to make sure you've got the correct clearance between the lifter bore and the body of the lifter so that everything works as the designers intended. We're covering that today. This video came about because of a conversation with Russ Yoder over at Urson Cams, who really is a fantastic technical resource. We were discussing lifters and machining tolerances for them, and he was one that pointed out that roller lifters actually have much more tolerance for uh, lifter bore clearance. Meanwhile, flat tappet lifters, which don't have the roller on the bottom, and remember this may be old technology, but they're still in use in a lot of places like stock car racing or other racing classes where these are required by the rules, or restorations of older cars. These have much tighter clearance tolerances. You really want these between one and a half to 1,007 tenths. That's the sweet spot. Russ says that you can actually go as wide as uh, 1,003 tenths, which is 0 0.0013 to 1,009 tenths, which is 0 0.0019 of an inch. That's a lot tighter than the two to three thousandths that a roller lifter can use. And the reason why is you don't want the flat tappet lifter to be able to move hardly any in the bore. A flat tappet lifter has to rotate or spin to keep everything working properly when the lobe comes by for the camshaft. And it has to be nice and tight or else if it's loose, it won't spin in the bore. And actually worse things can happen. As you see here from my little mock-up, you want the flat tappet lifter to ride straight up and down as the cam lobe moves underneath it. If there's too much clearance in the lifter bore, it can allow the lifter to rock back and forth a little bit. And the worst thing that can happen is if the lifter is allowed to catch an edge on the camshaft lobe as it rotates up. Then what happens is that edge will wipe away all the oil between the lobe and the lifter and then you start getting annealing on the lifter face and soon after that you'll get micro welding between the surfaces of the lifter and the cam lobe. Next thing you know, you've wiped out a lifter and a cam, and a lot of people will blame this on oils or lifters, and the problem all along is actually poor machining tolerances. Compare that to a roller lifter like this. Clearances aren't nearly as critical because if the lifter moves a little bit, it's okay. The roller wheel will take up the slack and it will still function as it should. The problem comes from the fact that the lifter barrel diameter can sometimes vary from the factory depending on manufacturer or more often, there's no telling what machine work has been done to a block and the lifter bores if an engine has ever been rebuilt. So as you can tell, checking and making sure you have proper clearances in the lifter bores for your lifters, whether you're running a flat tappet like this or a roller lifter, is critical. Fortunately, the process is straightforward, and if you're familiar at all with the process of checking your bearing clearances for your crankshaft mains or your rods, you already are on the right track. Let's get going with that right now. On the left is a flat tappet lifter and on the right is a pair of roller lifters. No matter which you're using, you want to make sure you take your measurements off the widest parts of the lifters and not the oil grooves on the body. Also, when you take your measurements with a micrometer, make sure to stay away from any oiling holes which can also throw off your measurements. For the most precise measurements, you will need a dial bore indicator capable of measuring diameters as small as 800 thousandths of an inch. Most dial bore gauge kits only go down to 1.4 inches, so this may be a special purchase for you. In addition to the dial bore gauge, you will also need a 0 to 1 inch micrometer. A good micrometer can be had for not a lot of money, so avoid trying to get by with a pair of calipers. They simply won't be accurate enough in this case. On a side note, I also don't recommend using a snap gauge like you see here. Snap gauges, or some people call them T gauges, snap out on both sides of whatever you put them in, and then the idea is you can measure the snap gauge to get the diameter. But their accuracy depends on you holding the gauge perfectly in line with the lifter bore, which is practically impossible to do. I'm obviously exaggerating the movements here, but you can see what I mean. In real life, Snap gauge measurements can be off by a thousandth of an inch or more, which is just too much when trying to determine proper lifter bore clearance. Anyhow, once you have your dial bore gauge and micrometer, the first step is to secure the lifter. I like to use this mic stand because it has rubber jaws and won't damage the lifter. You can use a standard vise like this if you need to, but just be careful to wrap the lifter in a towel and don't crank down any harder on the handle than you have to. 
with your micrometer, set the instrument to the diameter of the lifter and lock the mic. The actual measurement isn't important in this case. We'll be using the micrometer as a zeroing tool for the dial bore gauge in just a moment. Now swap out the lifter for your micrometer and the mic stand. And again, if you're using a bench vise, that's okay. Just be gentle and remember that this is a piece of precision equipment you're working with. Once you have your micrometer secured, insert the dial bore gauge into the measuring space between the anvil and the spindle and zero out the gauge. Rock the dial bore gauge back and forth gently to find the narrowest point. This is where you should zero out the dial gauge. Okay, so now what we've done is zeroed out the dial bore gauge to the same diameter as the lifter. So once we insert it into one of the lifter bores in the block, any difference we see on the gauge will be our clearance. Easy peasy. Insert the dial bore gauge into the lifter bore, making sure you stay away from the holes in the bore for the oil gallery. Gently rock the gauge back and forth until you get the smallest reading. That's when you know you have the gauge parallel with the center line of the bore. The difference from your zero mark on your gauge tells you exactly how much clearance you have between the lifter bore and the lifter. Write down that clearance number and move on to your next lifter bore. So now we know that we've got two thousandths clearance on our lifter bores on this World Products Motown 2 block. It's been machined for roller lifters and that's exactly what we want. But what do we do if say we want to run flat tappet lifters? Remember the clearance that you want there is between one thousandths three tenths and one thousandths nine tenths. 0 0.0013 to 0 0.0019 and ideally between 1,005 tenths and 1,007 tenths. So at 2,000 of an inch clearance, we run the risk of not having rotation of the flat tappet lifters and winding up killing a cam and some lifters. So what we could do there is have them bush to the smaller size. Or one trick a lot of clever engine builders will use is to go from the Chevrolet size, which is 0.842 thousandths of an inch for the lifters, to the nominal Ford size, which is 0.875. Just have these bushed out to a little bit bigger, run the Ford lifters, that saves you a little bit of time and money there. If you're a Ford guy or you've already used that trick, some people will go as extreme as using the Mopar size, which is 904 thousandths, which is even bigger still. Again, those are just a couple of options for you, but the key here is to know how to measure your lifter bore clearance so you know for yourself exactly what you've got. Hey, thanks for watching. Come back next time.